Hello, I'm Marina Macri. I am a biologist and a psychotherapist, and I am a PhD candidate in School of Medicine of Versatile University of Thessaloniki, and I am working in the Greek Association of Alzheimer's Disease and Related Disorders for the last seven years in the field of European uh, research projects. And today I will present you the main interventions for caregivers of people with dementia in our association. My presentation will include some definitions about caregivers, uh, a short description of the long-term care regime and caregiving, the main steps forward in caregiving and more details about our interventions for adult caregivers. According to former First Lady Rosalind Carter, there are only four kinds of people in the world, those who have been caregivers, those who are currently caregivers, those who will be caregivers and those who will need caregivers. Who are the informal carers? An informal carer is a person who provides care usually unpaid to someone with chronic illness, disability, or other long-lasting health or care need outside a professional or formal framework. Now, we will take a look on what is happening in Greece. In Greece, uh, the main model is the family-based care regime model with limited public responsibilities and limited formal service provision and with a central role being played by kinship networks. The long-term care in Greece based on a mixed system comprising informal and formal care with primary responsibility for the financial and practical support of dependents plays firmly on the family. And this is also the main model in the most Mediterranean countries. Traditionally, long-term care is provided by the family and only when the family is not able to care for the dependent or for the afford alternatives. The solution will be institutionalization. Although some formal care is provided, informal caregiving is still an important part of the long-term care system. Due to the traditional central law role of the family as a provider of care and to the financial hardship and the lack of supporting private provisions, a large share of the service provision is left to informal care. So we understand that we need to find some specific solutions and the steps in order to, to uh, go forward in caregiving. According to a research uh, of Eurocarers, which is an umbrella European organization uh, that uh, brings together caregivers organizations or universities and uh, research organizations, Europe need to follow the 10 steps towards carer-friendly societies. According to these steps, each country needs to define and acknowledge carers, identify their carers, uh, have access to the needs of their carers. There is also the, the need to support multi-sectoral care partnerships for integrated and community-based care services. It is very important to facilitate care access to information and advice about care 
caring and care life balance and to pay attention to carers' health to prevent negative health outcomes. It is important to give carers a break and to provide with access to training and recognize their skills. It is important also to prevent carers' poverty and allow them to maintain an active professional educational life. Finally, it is also crucial to underline that we need to adopt the carer's perspective in all relevant policies. According to a new European directive, which uh, pay attention to working family caregivers as it provides for the entitlement to a minimum of five days of caregiver leave per year and the right to flexible working arrangements or work from home for a period of up to six months. The new directive provides that uh, member states will take the necessary measures to protect working carers from discrimination or this uh, mutual as a result of the exercise of these rights. Of course, this directive uh, does not solve the major problems of working or non-family carers, but it is the first step. Uh, also, uh, national dementia strategies include some specific actions, plans for caregivers, uh, which uh, underline that it's important to establish an annual carer day. It's important to organize and implement of information uh, and educational programs for carers at re regional and national level. Uh, it is important to create uh, informative and educational uh, guides for caregivers to implement distant education programs for carers, to create helplines for carers and support of the civil alert service, and to create large care homes for people with dementia, a care center for carers staffed by health professionals. Uh, so in our association, we try to uh, move forward and uh, finally to um, implement some of these action plans. Uh, and thus we have created the last 15 years some sub specific supportive interventions for carers. Due to the hard consequences of care, and because there is a lot of research that um, underlying the both and the emotional burnout, the depression, anxiety symptoms of caregivers, the social isolation and uh, the conflicts uh, in the family, um, we try to support caregivers in all these different disciplines and um, after uh, these uh, 15 years uh, research, we finally uh, have, um, uh, we can finally underline that all these different interventions improve uh, carers' life, their psychological status and their quality of life, and also it prevents of developing worse feelings. In our organization, we start with a psychosocial assessment to evaluate the status of anxiety and depressive symptoms, sense of burden, coping strategies, and dysfunctional thoughts. And then we also provide a second assessment at the end of the interventions in order to estimate the effectiveness of these psychological programs. In these slides, you can take a um, look on the main interventions that are implemented by our association. And uh, I will say with you some more details about each of uh, these uh, inter interventions. Uh, 
Of course, I would like to underline that uh, from 2008 until now, more than 3,500 caregivers have uh, taken part in um, these interventions, uh, these specific support groups. Uh, the first and uh, the most uh, important group uh, is the psychoeducational group, which provides information regarding daily life activities and creates to be actively involved throughout the seminars, um, provide guidelines for more effective care, uh, helps uh, caregivers in making difficult decisions, that concern like their treatment decisions, um, learn uh, the caregivers to be flexible in the negotiation of alternative solutions. Uh, these groups share, uh, in these groups, caregivers can share their experiences and realize their own needs and sometimes accept their conditions of life. Also, many caregivers uh, take part in um, another kind of group uh, called support group, in which uh, we mainly use uh, cognitive behavioral therapy. And this group can improve effectiveness in their daily life uh, and in their role in the family, can build up the necessary psychological skills to deal with difficult aspects of disability and feelings of anger, um, loneliness, uh, loss, and helplessness, and uh, can develop new ways of interpreting uh, the situation they are dealing with, adapt more realistic targets and more effective strategies of pressure and anxiety uh, management. Uh, the family psychological support in which we use systematic approach to uh, help the whole family of person uh, with uh, dementia to face and cope with disability, uh, can reduce negative feelings, a sense of burden, and can acknowledge that all family members must work together and accept uh, persons with dementia suffering as people with valid needs. All these years, um, since uh, 2010, we also um, have uh, online educational support groups, uh, which provides education and psychological support to participants from different cities that cannot benefit from the traditional health support services due to the to do health issues, transportation, and time constraints. Uh, it provides a safe space and are um, led by psychologists um, or social workers who provide both emotional and practical support. Uh, this group reduces um, just these feelings of loneliness, anxiety, and distress, according to our research. Uh, can uh, help them learn new ways of coping, can increase feelings of hope and empowerment, and provide them with practical information about treatment and resources. Um, some of them uh, underline that uh, these groups help them communicate better with their loved ones, and also they underline that uh, they feel that they are not alone. We also have another uh, innovative intervention support groups using arts uh, based on therapeutic benefits of arts, help people with uh, um, cognitive impairments or caregivers to express uh, their feelings and find new meanings of their experience during each session, literature or a poetry stimulates participants to exchange thoughts and emotions. And besides oral sharing, the members of the group write their own stories using expressive and spontaneous writing techniques. And this is very important for them. 
We also have uh, relaxation interventions with reduced anxiety level, as well as psychosomatic symptoms using relaxation techniques and uh, mental, mental imaginary with lead in deep relaxation of body and mind. It decreases the sympathetic nervous system activity while increasing the parasympathetic nervous system activity. It helps to develop well-being, decrease stress level, and it used to manage stress, to decrease tension and anxiety, to interrupt obs uh, obsessive negative thoughts and to enhance coping ability. Uh, another intervention, uh, which is the added intervention, is called Writing Our Couples Life Book, in which participants are couples where the one partner have been diagnosed with mild cognitive impairment or mild dementia, and the other partner uh, is the caregiver. Based on the principles of narrative therapy, the ADIC intervention helps the couple to re-narrate and rewrite their story, including dementia, in their common life. Communication techniques uh, are presented to the couples in order to improve their communication skills. And um, some people underline that they learn new ways for interaction. A support group for grief, it refers to those who experience grief due to the loss of their patient. Uh, the main aim is to help them accept the reality of loss, to manage their emotions and adapt to the new cycle of their life. We also include uh, some other uh, interventions for the community outreach. An example called positive care in dementia in which Alzheimer's disease uh, International and uh, our association completed in 2016 a successful project called Train the Master Trainers, uh, who could then support a father, uh, 1,000 caregivers, and 600 dementia professionals through training events across the country. These seminars focused on interactive ways to engage professionals and individuals supporting uh, people with dementia. Uh, we also have uh, organized theater performances called uh, Caregiver's Voice, in which some professional actors and caregivers uh, can uh, present uh, in a theater show the stories of the caregivers which have been produced during the intervention Listen to My Story. Uh, we also organize a radio bro bro broadcast uh, called All About Dementia, in which uh, professionals um, uh, give some advice and more information about dementia. Uh, and also some caregivers have the chance to take part in and express their feelings and share their experiences. Another important intervention, uh, which is mainly uh, uh, workshops interventions for the children and adolescents called Who Am I Grandpa? And to uh, raise the awareness and provide knowledge to children concerning dementia. Uh, grandchildren have the opportunity to express their feelings and thoughts towards the disease and find out ways to interact, to interact with the grandparents with dementia. In these uh, groups, we use experiential techniques and expressive means, and uh, this specific intervention uh, has uh, been awarded in 2014 by Alzheimer's Disease International. Uh, also, the psychologists that um, organize uh, these workshops for children and adolescents, uh, they have uh, produced they have read uh, this uh, book for children called uh, Who Am I Grandpa? 
I would like also to underline that apart from these interventions for caregivers, um, we also have uh, a lot of different research projects for caregivers. You can take a look on these slides uh, in some examples of these research projects. And in these slides, I um, include some Erasmus Plus projects that uh, um, are focusing on caregivers. I will not share with you more details. You can uh, make research and find out more information about each of these projects. Uh, finally, uh, in uh, uh, the pandemic period, uh, we also continue to offer activities to carers uh, using online means. Uh, uh, we organize uh, online psychological support groups, psychoeducational uh, groups to cope with behavioral problems and other issues related to dementia and the lockdown. Uh, a weekly telephone communication and support uh, um, with carers who were not familiar with intern facilities, a weekly mail with educational and counseling material, a 24 helpline to cover their special needs, and a weekly online lecture. Um, uh, which uh, focused on uh, how to use positive psychology in order to strengthen your resilience. Uh, in order uh, to share with you more information about uh, all these interventions and uh, the work that uh, we uh, try to um, organize in our association, I will uh, share with you some recent publications. Um, most of them are uh, uh, focusing on uh, caregivers. All these publications uh, have been produced by our association and our researchers and psychologists and doctors. Uh, in this uh, specific uh, paper, called Interventions for Caregivers of People with Dementia in Greece. Uh, we uh, included all uh, our uh, interventions for carers, and you can find more details about them. Um, I will not share with you more details. You can make a research and find out uh, more about it uh, uh, for its uh, uh, paper, more information about its paper. Finally, uh, I would like to uh, invite you to take part in our conference, the Panhellenic Conference on Alzheimer's Disease and the Fifth Mediterranean Conference on Neurodegenerative Diseases, which will be uh, uh, organized uh, by our association in Thessaloniki on, in, uh, on um, 9 to 13 February of 2023. And it will also, uh, and you can also uh, take part online. Thank you for your attention.